Welcome back. Welcome back to the show we call Coach's Corner every Monday at 1 p.m. And we may be doing it more than once a week if I can get Coach Herrick because I know with your emails, your phone calls, uh, you love the show. Every week we have great guests. We just had Pam Walker on from head. Uh, she's the assistant women's basketball coach and director of operations there. So uh, great guest you brought in, Coach Herrick. Nice job. I'm bringing in a great guest now from the state of Ohio. So we have a new segment now. Every week we're going to feature somebody from around the country talking about their sports teams. Today I have an expert, a friend of mine, Gary Surak. Uh, welcome, Gary, to Southern California. Beautiful day, 80 degrees uh, here in Southern California. What, it, what, it, what is it in Canton, Ohio? What's the temperature? It was 62 about 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we've, we've had a wonderful day for April. It's uh, remarkable and sunny, and, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So We're let, a great I spring. want to talk about Cleveland sports teams. I also want to obviously talk about the NFL Hall of Fame. Coach Herrick's been there, so I'm going to let you two chat for about 10 seconds on that, so uh, don't bore anybody, <laughs> okay. Coach Herrick. But it's not. on my bucket seconds. list. It, well, I'll give you more than 10 seconds. But it's on my bucket list. I, I, I want to go to Canton. Tell us a little bit about Canton, Ohio for about 20 seconds. How big a city? Where is it in relationship to Columbus? Uh, uh, go Buckeyes. Tell us a little bit about Canton, okay. Ohio. It, it's an hour south of Cleveland, and it is about 80,000 citywide, but surrounding probably 300 and, or in change. Uh, the city of Canton has been on, uh, at least it was perceived to be in a decline, and yet, ironically, um, it's more up-tempo than I've seen it in years. Things are happening here that uh, I never dreamed I would see. Um, we had fracking, which is a very controversial thing, but has brought in a phenomenal amount of money into our area. And the Pro Football Hall of Fame, what's going on with that is remarkable. So we're, we're just having a growth spurt. Uh, Manufacturing-wise, we've lost some big manufacturers and some large companies, but we have some pretty strong institutional companies. So we're, we're, um, we're having a bit of a rebirth, so unlike anything I've seen in my lifetime, and I'm not young. Yeah, I visited the, uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame last year. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a born and raised Oakland Raiders fan, and Kenny Stabler was being inducted, so I made an attempt to go back to the ceremony and actually ran into some people I knew, uh, you know, from the, my Oakland days. And uh, I was very impressed with the people in that area you know we stayed a little bit about 20 minutes north of canton and and the people that we met from ohio in that region were just absolutely great i remember uh getting gasoline for a dollar 90 a gallon and i thought i was stealing somebody you know that <laughs> yeah. thought i was going to get arrested but uh yeah, you're, you're lucky you didn't but that's good yeah the uh the the, the cost of living there the you know my wife and i we we went out to dinner which you know, the bill might have been 40 bucks. If we had been here in Los Angeles, it would have been 80 bucks. I mean, people don't understand cost of living is, is a big thing in the Midwest that people don't, that some people in California move to those places. You know, and we know the winters are harsh, but the living conditions are great. And I thought the people there were excellent. Maybe you might well, think I about think moving. Well, the, the winters are too harsh for me. Oh, wow. Well, actually, we've had, and I don't want to jinx us, but we've had two of the mildest winters I've ever seen in the last two. Uh, we probably, I think I paid my plow guy three times last year. See, there's uh, people here that incredible. don't know what a plow guy is. They oh, think they, that's farmers.com no. or something. Yeah, no, that's almost. But, it, no, they actually plow snow in, in Ohio. And uh, But the guy came three times. I mean, I don't know how you run a business when you do three times. But literally, we've, we've had pretty mild winters. But nonetheless, we have a very uh, low-cost economy. Our housing prices are a fraction of what it costs to live on the West Coast or the East Coast. And the homes are very nice. The food costs, are, our cost of living is just very reasonable. All right, let's so talk about we, the Hall of Fame. I'm done with the uh, Chamber of Commerce okay. presentation here. <laughs> Good. What, That's all right. What a, how, how big a building is it? What, the stadium next door? Whose stadium is that? Tell us a little bit about the Hall well, of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame. The stadium for my entire life was named Fawcett Stadium um, until Tom Benson wrote a check for $11 bucks, and it's now called the Tom Benson Stadium. Odd how that happens. 
and they have literally taken the stadium down and rebuilt it. And it is, it's in the process of being rebuilt. It'll be finished by uh, summer. It's beautiful. It's uh, incredible what they've done. And Benson just cut a check and said, listen, you know, I'm, I'm all for this and we're good to go and we'll build a new stadium. And they have. And that's getting rave reviews. The Hall of Fame, um, I can't give you dimensions. I know when I was a kid, I went to the first induction. I rode my bike. I was like, I don't know, 12 years old or something. And I remember riding over and sitting on the steps and watching a bunch of people get inducted at the first one. And it was very exciting. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, interesting to see how it's evolved and what it's turned into. But what it really has turned into is Johnson Controls just footed, uh, I think, $110 million to become the name sponsor. And it'll now be the Johnson whatever Hall of Fame. And there, that's a lot of money. Well, well you know, what I, what, I, what, I, what I enjoyed about the Hall of Fame is, first of all, every football fan in America... And I, that's why I can't understand my partner, who's a big football fan, has not visited. Everybody that's a fan of football should at one time visit the Hall of Fame. I mean, it brings back memories. You know, as you're as a child, you go in there and see the the the, the monuments and the and the you know the information on players that you watch as a child. It's 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 pretty impressive to me to be in a in a place like that that just glorifies football. And uh, and the and the community of Canton really does a great job of promoting it. That's that that was another thing that I noticed. You know, the people that work there, uh, the, you know, take the tickets and sh- and give you the tours and and do that are so proud of what they do uh, that yeah. it's just a place that everybody should go. No, I, and that's why I wanted to have Gary on because we know baseball's where. Do you know where baseball is? Baseball is Hall of Fame, in uh, Cooperstown. Cooperstown, New York. Little Cooper little tiny town, town and then. And then you have the National Football League. But where's the NBA? You're Springfield, a Massachusetts. Nobody even cares. Yeah. Nobody yes, they cares. do. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Well, Coach is anti-basketball. No, I'm not anti-basketball. Get, I, I, I can tell that right away. <laughs> yeah, see, that, <laughs> you, so you, don't even you can't tease that. him. He's very sensitive, Coach Eric. You're listening to Coach's Corner uh, Mondays at 1 o'clock. So honored to uh, have you listen. On KHTS 1220 AM, our very special guest from Canton, Ohio, Gary Serac. So uh, let's take 30 more seconds, and I want to go around the different Cleveland teams. The uh, Can you touch the bust of the players? Uh, no. Oh, you can't? No. no. No, used but, to be able to, but they have yeah. moved those, and uh, that's after someone stole the OJ's. But uh, yeah. anyhow, so you know what anyhow, they, you so know what, I, you, know, uh, you know what I liked about the the Hall of Fame is that one where you go into the locker room, and they have yep. the hologram uh, players that come out and talk to you, like Joe Namath, and I mean it was yeah. you you it was like you were in there with them, and you're in a NFL. Those are, those are people that have never played football don't understand the locker room is a very sacred place and you in every be, sport yeah and you could be in the yeah. locker room with joe namath and and jerry rice and it was pretty impressive that would be cool well they're building an amusement park an indoor amusement park based on football uh i i don't know much about it it's been pretty quiet but i'm told they're they're doing something universal studios ish and uh, that's going to be incredible. They're building a four-star hotel. They've already built a number of practice fields for youth. They're also building a senior living complex for players who have uh, run out of money and need a place to live and or have assisted living. And so they're doing that. In addition to that, they're building an auditorium that will allow the uh, D-League basketball of the Cavaliers, the Canton Charge, to play there. Wow, I mean, it's it's turning into a village, yeah. literally a Hall of Fame village. And you know what people don't also uh, recognize about that area is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland, Ohio, which is right up the you know, what thirty minutes up the road, and that was very. We went, my wife and I visited that, and we were very, very, not only impressed with that, but the 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 location of where it is. It's next to the arena, and uh, you know the downtown stadium. I mean, it's Cleveland has done a great job in that area. You know, you can conclude Canton, but the area around there has done a great job of promoting uh, and modernizing for for its fans. All right, nice segue into Cleveland sports. So we know last year, heartbreaking loss for the Cleveland Indians, and I used to go, I used to have an office in Bray, I used to go back in the day, it was called Chase Field. What is it called now? The baseball uh, it's, stadium. It's Progressive Field. Progressive Field. It was field. called the Jake, 
Jacob's yeah, Field. The Jake, the Jake. Right, yeah. And I have had season tickets for 25 years. I sit behind the visitor's dugout about six rows back. Wow, you spoiled uh, brat. You spoiled brat. I am absolutely a spoiled Great brat. Great stadium. Brat. I mean, really and uh, I, beautiful. Wonderful. So you went, to the, I, World Ser- you went to the World Series last year. Yeah, I've been to. Yeah, I went to the World Series. It was Game Seven. My son flew in from Colorado. I picked him up at Cleveland Airport, and he got in the car. He looked at me. He says, "Dad, this is Game Seven. We're either going to win, we're going to lose, but we're going to have a good time." And he said, "Of course, we'll have a better time if they win, but we're not going to. We're going to go and enjoy the moment because we're just going to see what this is all about." And uh, I said, "Max, I'm in. We're going." And we had a great time until the tenth inning. Did you so jump up? Was, did uh, you jump up and down like a madman when Rajay Davis hit that home run off of? Uh, uh, what's his yes. name, Chapman? Oh, it was probably the most exciting thing I may have ever seen in sports. And, and I've seen a whole lot of sports, but I don't know that I've seen anything quite like that at the timing. And quite honestly, I really feel to this day that had we not had a rain delay, we would have won that game. Yeah. The rain delay just yep. took all the momentum out of us, and I don't know why, and it just never got back. So it was it was probably the most dramatic thing I've seen, well, I've you, seen in sports. You know, so. that's what they say about, you know, everybody was all fired up because Cleveland hadn't been in, uh, won a World Series in 100 years. But, I mean, uh, Chicago. But you guys, you know, haven't, oh, yeah. haven't really had a lot of success in baseball either. So either way, to us outsiders, it would have been a, a fantastic thing for whether you yeah. want it or they want it yeah. because you guys haven't won that many. It was a great series. Do you remember who the pitcher for the Cubs was who made the last out? Do you remember what his name you was? got the save. Yeah. Do you remember? I'm trying to lead mm. into something here. Do you know who, uh, no, who I, it was? I, Mike, I, Michael Montgomery. Okay. And who used he, to be a member who used to be a camper at my basketball camp. He's from our area. Yeah, from uh, wow. Valencia. Yeah, he went to what? Hard High, High School. Hard and coach coached him. <laughs> coach, yeah, how about him and Trevor Bauer on the same uh, on oh, the same high you school had team? Bauer too? Yeah, yeah that's Hard High School had Trevor Bauer. They had uh, Michael Montgomery. Michael Montgomery and this kid Glasgow that's on the Pirates. They were all wow. on the same staff. Yeah, this is a and big. They didn't win the championship. It's a big time show, yeah. Coach's Corner here on KHTS 1220. We had I'm uh, getting Shane, more impressed by the yeah, we had Shane so. Vereen on last week. So uh, and now we have you on Gary Serac from uh, Canton, Ohio. So uh, let's move past baseball. Sad for your loss. Uh, great series. Thank you. Basketball Cavaliers win by one point. They were heavily not heavily favored, but they were favored, and uh, heavily favored. Two against seven. Yeah, they you know, were definitely heavily favored. Now, uh, he's not going to tell you, but I'll tell you, he's a homer. So we're going to get into basketball here in a second. He's a, a, a Cavalier, not a Cavalier. I'm a Golden State team? Warriors Excuse fan. Excuse me, Golden okay. State Warriors So you, you yeah, know what you guys did to uh, last year. I remember that. Yeah, but, what, the uh, Cubs, but what the Cubs did to you guys, you guys did, did to Golden us. State. Yes, exactly. All right. Almost remarkable if you think about it. But, yes, it was a total reversal of that. And, uh and it is disheartening, but also a great series. And it's good when someone else wins. That's and and not for Golden me. It is one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get that. He's really bitter. You don't guy. want the the Cubs to win the World Series. You guys want to win. He's really bitter. Oh, but oh, yeah. I I'm got bitter. I I'm to bitter win the because World Series. I'm bitter because yeah. of the, the circumstances that surrounded the the Warriors blowing the three game lead. Three games yeah. to one. Well, lead. if your boy and, Green uh, didn't get kicked out, yeah, they would have won it. And Bogut got hurt. Yeah. So that's two this stars year. That can't play. Gary, I'm sorry to say, I think uh, San Francisco or Oakland, whatever they're. What's the name of your Golden team? State Warriors. Golden State Warriors has probably three great players and four. two four great players. And you guys are just under man. I, I just have to say, I mean, LeBron, I don't think can carry the thing. You got well, two Kyrie great players. Irving's pretty darn good, and Kevin Love's good. But truthfully, they've been somewhat dysfunctional all season. They they have not had a great season by any stretch. And last year they had all kinds of momentum coming into the playoffs. I don't think they have any of that right now. For some reason, the chemistry isn't there. Whether they can rally it, but what Cleveland had is a bunch of really hardworking guys and three guys that could really play. I mean, exceptionally well, and they do have three I consider stars. Then they have some really good role players, but if they're going to win, they're going to have to play defense, and they have just not done that all season. Well, They've you're really going to have to take a deep breath. Uh, if you get past uh, Indiana, God bless you, but uh, I don't see it. I, I think, uh, what's the name of your team, Golden State? The Golden I, yeah, State I Warriors. I like Golden State Warriors. All right, let's move on to uh, my favorite sport, uh, football. There's two. Uh, I have two favorite sports, football and spring football. 
So okay. uh, how? And I know you. I know you go to the Browns. How do you? How do you exist as a fan in Cleveland for the Cleveland Browns? That I don't see Cleveland in the next thirty years having a competitive team. Thirty years. Well, I, I, that's a long time. Okay, so here's my story about the Browns. When I was a kid. When my dad finally started earning a living, he and a friend of his bought season tickets. And I probably was 13 or 14 years old, and we had season tickets in the family. When I came back to the family business, my dad said, you know, I don't really think I want to keep the tickets. And I said, Dad, I'll take them. So we really had almost for 50 years we had brown season tickets. We had great seats. New stadium. I had really good club seats up in the 20-yard line. Wonderful view. But we didn't have a football team. So finally, three years ago, I just said, this is ridiculous. I couldn't even get anyone to go to the games with me. It was that bad. And, I mean, it, these are really expensive seats for Cleveland, probably not for L.A., but they were expensive for Cleveland. I couldn't give them away. So I'm there one game, and I'm sitting next to a young couple. And we're talking, and I said to the young couple, I said, boy, you know, these are great seats. Um, did you buy them on StubHub? And he said, yeah. I said, what would you pay? He said, oh, I paid 150 I said, each? He said, no, for both of them. I turned to my wife and said, they paid 75 bucks a piece, we're done. I was paying 225 I said, you know, to go watch this football team play football and spend that kind of money and blow a Sunday is just not worth it. So I literally discontinued my tickets at that point in time. I had made the decision, and then when they called me to renew, I said, no, I, I uh, decided to decline. I'm not going to renew. And the lady said, you've had these tickets for 50 years. You're one of our oldest supporters. I said, I am one of your old supporters, ex-supporters. I said, I will not buy tickets anymore. And she said, what can I do to change your mind? I said, well, you could, first of all, you can feel a football team that wins more than three games. Ouch. I said, but truthfully, uh, yeah, I just said, this is just not fun anymore. I said, and, and it was very, very frustrating. I do I have hopes for Hugh Jackson. I do. I uh, think Yeah, he, you're dreaming. He's you're you're dreaming. We've got to go to a commercial break. We're going to come back. His name is Gary Serac. He's our Ohio sports reporter. We'll be right back on Coach's Corner on KHTS 1220 AM. Fastest hour in radio, Coach's Corner. Uh, sports are fun for me and fun for my partner, Coach Greg Herrick. Coach of Brett Saberhagen, Saberhagen, I know the name, Kansas City Royals, Cy Young Award, MVP. You Twice. coached him. Twice. Uh, uh, and you're uh, really, I, I honor you because you're one of California's uh, all-time winning women's basketball coaches. Let me coaches. tell you a Brett Saberhagen story. Can you make it quick? Yeah. he uh, He's the second fastest pitcher to 200 wins in the history of baseball. There's only one other guy that got to 200 wins quicker than he did. So you think he's be two Cy Young Awards, a World Series MVP. You think it's credentials for the Hall of Fame? Yeah. When Pete Rose was denied. He's too young. He's when too Pete, young. Well, now, but when Pete Rose was denied access to the Hall of Fame, Brett made a statement publicly, if they don't put Pete Rose in, I don't want to go in. Now, what do you think that says to the writers? Exactly. So he's never going to So if you have a son or daughter that's a potential baseball player, for $500 an hour, we'll coach him up, okay? Uh, just call in 298-5487. We'll sign up uh, your kid for Coach Herrick's fabulous baseball camp starting in a week. Academy. Okay. <laughs> the Academy. Coach Herrick's Baseball Academy. And I'll be assisting. I'll be doing all the talking. <laughs> you can do all the coaching. All right, it's called Coach's Corner on award-winning KH TS 1220 AM. So I'm real proud of your school, College of the Canyons uh, golf team. Wow. Unbelievable success. Yeah. Gary Peterson is the coach. And if you saw him walking around, you'd think he was the Mater D at Tommy Bahamas. He's always got a Hawaiian shirt on. I mean, they, they internationally recruit. They have players from South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, France. Uh, it's an it's incredible line of success. They've won the state title eight times. What about the College of the Canyons baseball team? What a heck of a season they're having. 22-11, yeah, 12-2 they yeah. in the WSC. What's the WSC stand for? Western, Western States. State, no, Western State Conference. State, not states. Right. States. Second place in the W. So if you have a, 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 a kid, a male or female, in high school or college, like last week, we had that nice young man from Valencia. would love to have your daughter or your son on our show, and we'll give them a plug. So if you're listening, if you're a grandparent, because that's a, we have grandparents listening, right? Yeah, I'm a grandparent. And I know you are. 
Uh, you're also the father of the All-State, All-American, All-Everything, Michael Herrick, and Robert Herrick, who also went to the Naval Academy. And next Monday, is he going to be in town? Can yes. we get him on the air? Yes, he's coming out from Can New we? Hampshire. You know, you talked about our boy from Canton, Ohio, with the snow, with yeah. the farm what, what, equipment. What was that called? My son said that to me snow once. Plow? He said his in-laws gave him a snowblower for Christmas. I said, when you get farm equipment... For Christmas, yeah. it's not a good place. You're in a pro yeah. But he said snow plow. Yeah, that's well, worse. I don't even know what a snow that's, plow. I have no, no clue. Plow boy or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, snow plow. plow. Man. Uh, we got two minutes left. Uh, anything you want to talk about? Uh, basketball season goes on for another month. It's well, well I want to acknowledge uh, Cheyenne Cheshire from Valencia High School. She's uh, the fourth ranked long jumper in Southern Section, Southern California uh, track and field. She, she long jumped 17 11, which is pretty good. And uh, she's fourth in the triple jump, which is uh, 38.9. That's very good. And I coached track way back in the day. You don't know that, do you? No, I don't and know. And I was that. the coach of the jumping events because most of my basketball players would go out for so track. So, how far could you, seriously, if you and I went out and broad jump right now, we'd go over to the college and broad jump. When, how I, far I, when we, I was how 13 years old, I'd long jumped 20 feet. Could you go? 13. Could you go from the wooden launch to the? You if think I you couldn't could make reach it to the, the pit, I, would, I couldn't reach the pit. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't think you could. No, I did. <laughs> I don't think you could. Uh, Coach's corner today is dedicated to Rebecca Sayer. Uh, what a great lady! She uh, makes you feel good when you're around her. There you go. There's very few people that you can sit and, and be around that just make you feel better. When That's true, here. Rebecca. If you're listening, you, you're an inspiration of the coach and I. And uh, Come tomorrow morning to, uh, well, he won't be there, but we're at uh, Starbucks every morning if you want to come meet us. And I'm serious. If you have a son or daughter that is in any sport, I, even crew, uh, tennis, badminton, bowling, uh and that was a segment we did when we opened the show, uh, sports that are ignored. There's a lot of great sports out there, Coach, besides marbles. football. Marbles. I played. Yeah, that's I, a sport. I did marbles when I was a kid. It was big, marbles. Nobody ever – that's funny you brought that up. You're aging yourself. You know what's another what kid sport plays that marbles? people don't know that what? we did as kids and they don't do anymore is the flipping the baseball cards? Did you do that? I put them on my bike. Oh. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for listening.